Hi, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, this recording illustrates the use of StatCrunch, uh, applying the concepts embedded in chapter two, where the objective is to learn how to compute statistics for categorical variables and how to interpret such statistics as well. So those are the goals of this uh, brief video. I uh, want to illustrate a couple of things that you should open uh, when you are working with uh, this particular setup. From your canvas, which you should have visible on the screen right now, you should go to my lab and mastering and within my lab and mastering, scroll down to student links and under student links, look at my lab stat all assignments. Once you click there, you should be able to uh, then open the assignment that you intend to work on. In this case, the assignment that we're working on will be the assignment in lab two. So let me share screen for lab two. And not only have I opened lab two already to question one, but also I have StatCrunch already open as a blank page. It looks like a spreadsheet application. Every row will contain an observation of data and every column will contain a variable. So consistent with chapter one, every row is a different who and every column is a different what. Uh, in the first question, for example, we have uh, data that is introduced via the uh, human resource group at a company where data was collected about the college educational attainment of the workforce at that company. They found 164 people without a college degree. So the number 164 is a statistic that is given to you. And it is a statistic that measures how often people in the workforce of this company uh, do not have a college degree. Then 47 people have an associate's degree, 237 a bachelor's degree, 49 have a master's degree, and 25 have PhDs. And so what I have created here is what in a previous video would be called the summary form of the data. Upon checking the answer, you will see that the answer is correct. In the second part of this question, as we continue, the question requires that we create a relative frequency table for the level of education of the employees of the company. And in this case, we will be recording the answers as percentages, rounding to two decimal places as needed. So one of the things that I'm gonna do in order to start using StatCrunch and do this is I'm gonna take the frequency table that we generated in part A and I'm gonna command C, I'm gonna to go to StatCrunch and I'm going to command V or paste it. And what you'll see is that the pasting doesn't work very well because the format of the data is not very good. So I would have to then manually cut and paste the table in the right order. Cut is control X, paste is control V. So that's one approach. The other approach is to type every entry since it is a small table. So I could do that. And yet another approach would be to copy and paste first on a application that is designed for better formatting, such as Microsoft Excel. If we had copied the current information in to Microsoft uh, Excel, it would have copied as a, as a table, as we saw it in the um, lab. But as you can tell, it doesn't take very long to uh, take uh, the table and uh, properly format it within StatCrunch. 
So in this case, level is the categorical variable. The values of the categorical variable are from none to PhD, and these are called categorical ordinal data because they are in order, in order of ascending educational attainment. And then the frequencies are the statistics. So the reason why this is called a summary form is because the raw data form is in effect, there's only one variable called level of education. And uh, you're gonna see the word none repeated 164 times. You're gonna see the term AA repeated 47 times, so on and so forth. So this, uh, this one column of raw data would be extremely long. It would have about 400 uh, rows or so whatever the sum of these frequencies happens to be, that's how many rows of individual observations of data we would have. That would be called the data form. And the summary form is, uh, is what we see here, which is that every value of the categorical variable level is repeated only once in the correct order when the categorical data is ordinal. And then the frequency statistic would tell you how often these values are repeated. What we're gonna learn to do next is several different ways of figuring out the relative frequencies. One approach is to create a graph. The graph is called a pie chart. And the pie chart comes from the summary of the data. So you go graph, pie chart, summary data, you would click on that. The categories are under the column called level and the counts are under frequency. And then you would just calculate the percent of total. And this is very important. The order should be the worksheet order so that you maintain the ordinal character of the values of the variable level. So once you've made those four changes, you can click on compute and you'll see that from none to AA to BA to MA to PhD, the percentages are listed in this format here. So uh, let me make sure that you can see the, yes, you can see the, the pie chart. And then you enter these uh, 31.42, 9, 45.4, et cetera. You would enter those answers into into the relative frequency. And upon checking the answer, it should be all correct. So that is how we use StatCrunch to deal with situations where data entry, a certain amount of data entry are, is required. And then uh, the pie chart option allows you to calculate all the percentages at once. Another approach to calculating all the percentages at once on the table here is uh, you can use some, a command called data compute expression. Data compute expression is essentially StatCrunch's calculator feature. So when you click on data compute expression, if I type the name of the variable frequency, and then I divide it by the sum of frequency, I can then calculate the percent frequency or the relative frequency. And as you can see, there are the percent frequencies expressed as decimals. Because we had done some minor typing in the columns that had occurred there earlier, um, the software has this tendency to go to the next column of clear or pre-worked items uh, next, then 
where, where you'd never used that you'd never used before. So I first deleted the columns that were empty, and now I'm going to edit the formula because what I want to do to write this as a percent is pre-multiply the frequencies by 100. And I'm going to call this percent frequency 2. And now I've written it in the form of integers with decimals. And if I want to refine the formula even further, what I can do is embed all of this into something called a round to formula. I can do round two and put it in two decimal place format. And I can always go options edit and look at the entire format of the formula and uh, take that and uh, be done. So notice how I've expressed the percentage frequency in the format that the question asked me to by following these kinds of expressions. Now, I know how to use some of the language of expression, some of the syntax in StatCrunch, you may not. And so whenever you are in a situation that where you're encountering something new to do, uh, you would use data compute expression. And rather than, you know, try something you haven't done before, you can build the expression. So the, the expressions, the expressions come with a builder. And the builder allows you to take any function uh, that you could think of. Like for example, we could try the round two and double click round two. And then in, inside the round two, we can put the frequency divided by the sum of frequency. And then we can set this to two decimals. And uh, notice how you get the exact same expression that I typed by hand. And uh, this is going to be called the fourth type of event. And you'll see that uh, the answer is in decimal. So what did I do differently or wrong? Ah, I forgot to multiply this by 100. And so through trial and error, I can get the results I want. Grit, again, playing a role, working at refining your answer until it's done the right way. Uh, once you know how to do it the right way, you insert it into some notebook of yours that has a library of formulas and and then you always go back to that library of formulas of your own and uh, to customize your work. So that's uh, how you use StatCrunch to calculate a percentage, a list of percentages from one quantitative variable. In the next video I'm going to share with you how to calculate percentages for two variables in the cases that chapter two refers to as in the contingency table cases. Thank you for watching this short video on dealing with one variable, with one categorical variable at a time.